Hey folks, Phil the B-Man here. Thought I'd give you a bit of a closer look at my encapper as I've got it partially apart for servicing. The uh, main works of this thing are the knives, which I use what Cowan calls his new style knife, which is this, I think of it as a cheese grater rather than a knife. The frames pass uh, past this edge here, and the cappings are rubbed off as it goes past uh, these places here. Um, the fact that it's sort of a continuous band of deflectors really helps this thing go through the combs without a whole lot of breakage. I imagine the evolution of these knives was, I remember the old serrated knives had a two or three kind of fingers that stuck up uh, past the knives to pull the knife out before it got to the top bars. And I can imagine someone sitting in their workshop thinking, what if I had more of those fingers? Would I have less uh, problems? And so eventually that led to this uh, probably laser cut knife uh, and so it's these edges here, the inside of it, it's these little corners that do the cutting. And think of it as a, as a cheese grater rather than a knife. Uh, there's a tube running down the back side fed with two water inlets and so hot water is circulated to keep this thing warm enough to keep the wax from sticking to it. The heat isn't enough to cut the wax on its own. It's kind of more of a maintenance thing. And with these serrations, actually, um, if they, sometimes if someone forgets to turn the heat on, it's not a crisis. The knives attach to these bars. Those are the bolt holes for the knives. And those bars are on a cam that goes right there. You can see the springs in the back. And so I'll turn it on and you can see at work. And that pushes the knife shafts back and forth. And that's what causes it to cut. All these chain mechanisms are to feed the frames in and that'll make more sense if I show that to you when it's in operation. There's a series of guides, you know, guiding these wooden parts through this metal machine. A fair bit of uh, subtlety to that. A couple, uh, well, I guess the, the knife settings are controlled with these cams that are off right now. Go on the end of the shaft and by levering in and out on a spring, set the depth of the blade. And there's also plastic bushings that these knives go back and forth on. It goes in and out. And those need to be replaced every few years. And the original design of this uh, knife, or the, of this, this uncapper, has a, let me get that. That, those, those bushings are held in place with a plate. The original plate uh, supplied to the machine was held with a single bolt through the middle that also holds in uh, that guide there. And to get that guide sorted out, you got to remove the chains, which is an, really a pretty major undertaking to replace a pretty uh, a constant wear item that needs to be replaced every few years. So I built my own retention plate, drilled two new holes and then uh, to attach it and then holes for the knife shafts and for the uh, guide plate so that that doesn't have to be loosened to replace the bushings. And that saved me over the years a ton of grief. 
and I made it out of aluminum just because that's way easier to work in my shop than I don't have the uh, the kind of laser cutting that would be able to make a plate like that out of stainless. I probably could have welded on a washer or something onto each side to Mickey Mouse it, but uh, aluminum is so nice to work, I just did it that way. All right, that is uh, the gist of the uncapper. When you're operating these things, you need a food safe lubricant. I use this one. Also excellent for frying stuff in your kitchen, but uh, it's actually, I think of it as a WD-40 for beekeepers. A little of that canola spray uh, can loosen anything up. I also recommend a good local beverage on a hot Saturday afternoon. Don't mix those two up if you can help it. And if you can't get it loose, you spray it with some oil and let it soak and you have a beer. All right, thanks a lot everyone, have a great day.